Hey guys, I wanted to hop in real quick before the video starts and give you a heads up that the RS6 you're about to watch was shot about eight to 10 months ago and I kept it in the queue for emergencies like this. As you can see behind me, uh, we haven't been able to do any cars, detail, shoot any videos, do anything because we replaced the floor for the fourth time. There wasn't any rebar, there wasn't any pins and we had to do it again because the floor was literally going up and down concrete as you were standing on it, wild. So make sure you keep up with my Instagram. So without further ado, uh, check out the RS6 video. Thanks for watching. Well guys, it's here, the all new 2021 RS6 Avant. Absolutely stunning car. I've received the most texts, tweets, Instagram, everything you can imagine about this car in particular. So everyone's super pumped. What we're gonna do today, of course, is to wash it. Uh, we're gonna polish it out. There's a few areas that actually need a little bit of polish, but overall, it's pretty good. I'm gonna show you the undercarriage and of course, the ginormous rotors and brakes. I've never seen anything this big on a wagon by any means. Here's an example. This is, <laughs> this is a hubcap off a of Tesla, which we're working on over there, uh, 18 inch. Just to give you a little perspective, I mean, come on, have you ever seen anything like that? It's insane. Also, this car was picked up and purchased in, I think, Delaware, Wilmington, Delaware, and driven all the way up to Connecticut on 95. The owner put track wrap everywhere on the front of the car so uh, there wouldn't be any rock chips. So once I'm done with all the process here, we're gonna be putting a clear bra on the outside and the inside. Yes, you heard me, the inside. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And then afterwards, we're gonna put a coating on it and of course, deliver it back to the customer. So we have a lot to do, but he did give me permission to put the wheels back on. We were changing them from the stock 22s, meaning what he normally drove on to his winter tires, which are 21s. Again, also insane. We're gonna put the 21s on here for the winter because it's pretty cold. And he allowed me to go out and uh, take it for a drive and uh, tell you guys what I think about it. But we're gonna bring it back in. We have a lot of work to do, so let's do it. This is the most anticipated car of 2021. The RS6 Avant Wagon hasn't been sold in the US since the 2003 RS6 sedan nearly 18 years ago. This model has the four liter twin turbo V8 with 591 horsepower, 590 torque, an eight speed transmission, it's all wheel drive and it weighs nearly 5,000 pounds, yet it does the quarter mile in 11 and a half seconds and a top speed of 190 miles an hour, all while full of groceries and kids, all for around about $110,000. This customer purchased the car in Delaware and drove it straight back to the studio for some paint correction, clear bra, and a coating. But first, she needs a quick bath, and I'm starting with the wheels, which are 22-inch forged aluminum with 17.3-inch carbon rotors and 10 piston calipers on front, 14.7 in the rear. These are the same ones that are on the Lamborghini Urus, so why not start here? As you can see up close, the rotors are almost comically large. I mean, insanely big for a daily driven wagon, but that's one of the many reasons why this thing is awesome. Next, I filled the wheel bucket with wheel soap, pre-rinsed the 22s on the holder, and then cleaned the light road grime and clayed them so a coating could be applied to them later. Also keep in mind that these are going into winter storage after the detail, so despite not being super dirty, we wanted to get them perfect before they get tucked away for several months. I re-rinsed them and then used compressed air on the tight spots so there was no water left over. For the paint, undercarriage, and wheels, I mixed 50% Brute with 50% Boost Salt Neutralizing Soap that has a lower pH to neutralize minerals and salts that get on the car from sitting at the dealer lot located near the ocean or saltwater air. With the wheels now clean and dry, we then sprayed the wheel wells with water and our mixture from the foam gun on both the front and the back of the brake and suspension components to remove any possible salt residue per the request of the customer, as the car will no longer live by the ocean, so he wanted to start out his new ownership fresh and clean. Afterwards, I focused on cleaning the paint by using one wash bucket filled with clean towels, light agitation, and then rinsing off the soap before drying with a damp microfiber towel and no hydrate drying aid as it leaves behind protection that's unnecessary when you're about to polish the paint. Then I used compressed air and wiped down the door jams. 
Next up, I focused on the paint correction. Okay, at this point, we've washed and dried the paint and it looks pretty good. Now, if you remember two years ago, we did three DT3s at once and the paint had a bunch of issues in different areas. This particular paint is much better than the Porsches were way back then, but there are a few issues. We have some on the mirror, the lower area here, the back panel, uh, one on the front, and specifically this one here, which is kind of interesting to me. And the reason I think this one exists is when the owner picked it up from De in Delaware and drove it up here, there was track wrap. And he did that you know, from a smart perspective. He just didn't want to get any rock chip. Totally makes sense. But if it's not perfectly flat, meaning it's not all the way down and wrapped around the edge, a little bit will peel up, right? And maybe let's say 50 miles in and it'll catch all the dirt as it's driving. Then it'll start to flap and, and, and sort of scratch the paint, which I think happened here uh, and on the other side as well. So it's consistently scratched and it's easy enough to get out. What I'm gonna be using here is the medium wool polishing pad on the three inch uh, Rupes along with the DA uh, fine polishing compound. Now, the reason I'm using this is kind of interesting. People would think wool, okay, wool is a little bit stronger. It's actually the opposite. Uh, this doesn't generate as much heat as let's say microfiber in this case. Uh, and why that's important is we have a brand new car here, fresh paint. Um, maybe there's some uh, expanding and contracting and things that are gonna happen that we normally do when we polish paint. I don't really wanna do that on brand new paint. So in this case, this particular type of uh, wool pad is gonna generate less heat than microfiber. So that was my uh, thought behind why I chose doing it on this particular uh, area here. Again, it feels a bit crazy to polish a brand new car, but at this point, its age is somewhat irrelevant. This paint is scratched and it's not perfect. The owner paid a lot of money to have a perfect car and it's not. Plus, we're putting a clear bra on, so a correction must take place right now. Now, last week, someone left a comment in the Monza video saying something about how it was totally insane that a brand new $2 million car needed a paint correction. And I completely agree. In theory, it should be perfect the day that you get it. But in reality, think about how many hands touch it before it gets to you, meaning during the shipping, during the unwrapping, the PPI, the dealership wash, and so on. This is all before the owner takes possession. So yes, you're right. If it was all done perfectly, then polishing would be completely unnecessary, but that is simply not the case as you can see here. Anyhow, once all the paint issues were corrected, it was now time for the clear bra. For the first step, once again, we clean it to remove just any light dust before we put it on. Then we laid the PPF down and used hot water to make the material a little bit more pliable, a little more stretchy so that we can work with it easier before squeegeeing it into place. While the bra was drying, I focused again on the calipers, which at this point were 100% clean and 100% dry, but they did have a manufacturing part number sticker on the lower part. To remove them without scratching the red paint, I used a plastic razor blade. Once mostly gone, I then used Rapid Remover to remove the last of the glue with a microfiber towel before using the 1-inch Nano, the Yellow Pad, and Uno Polish to get the calipers ready for Gillet Pro wheel coating in the next step. With the coating now on all the calipers, I then repeated the same steps on the second set of wheels as well, the original 22 inch, and of course the new BBF's winter rims that had a matte finish. If you have the opportunity to take your wheels off while you're cleaning them, you can place one to two coats of gelée on the inner barrels as well. This will make future cleaning of the hard spots, meaning behind the spoke when the wheel is on the car, much easier in the future. FYI, a lot of you have asked in comments if Gillet Pro can be used on matte wheels. As you can see, it goes on wet, but when you remove it, it's still matte, but this time it has a deeper tone to it, a better look to it, and it's now protected. Next, I applied Reflex Pro to the paint and the broad areas. As you can see, as I'm applying the Reflex Pro, there are a few small pieces of yellow masking tape. Now, these are just reminders for me to check the PPF for bubbles or small imperfections or whatever it needs to be done before it's released to the customer. This is just a, a way to help me remember to remember. Once I was all done, I installed the winter wheels and the rubber on this daily driven all wheel drive beast and lowered it down just a little bit so that I could torque the wheels without them spinning. 
Finally, because of all the interior screens, I decided to surprise the owner with PPF over the many touchscreens on the center console. To do this, first we cleaned the screen, then cut PPF to size and applied it with application gel. On the lower screen, we repeated the same template technique as we did on the above screen, but because uh, this was last minute, we didn't have any time to order pre-cut kits, so we did this uh, on the fly. This particular film is antimicrobial and designed for touchscreens. With our makeshift template on the table, we pulled the film over it, measured, and cut the appropriate size. Once again, we cleaned it, applied the gel, placed the film, and squeegeed it into place. As you can see, the screens are now protected, but it has the exact same sensitivity to touch as it did before. Now, if this car wasn't cool enough as it is, check out the headlights and how they go off. I love the small touches on this car. The next day, after the bra and the reflex were all dry, it was now time to go for a ride, but this time I won't play any music over the startup. With the door open, check out the Audi Sport logo on the ground. Again, a very nice touch. Once inside, the gauges are huge and have every option to adjust the car you could ever imagine. And with the inside and the outside protected, the RS6 looks absolutely gorgeous. But now it's time to go for a drive per the customer's demand. He said, I have to go for a drive as soon as I finish. He was on his way to pick it up as well. Super cool guy. Here we go. Wow, it smells really nice in here too. You know what I need though? My sunglasses. This is basically supercar territory in terms of the numbers, but you have it in a wagon. That's That dichotomy is what's making my brain go nuts. And you can kind of just go, put my blinker on, step on the gas. Holy. Yeah, I, it's nonstop waving. So that's one of the things you gotta be careful about when you're driving a, on a side note, when you're driving a supercar, let's say you're a yellow, Lamborghini. One of the aspects that you run into more often than not, um, yeah, uh, one of the things that you run into more often than not is when you're driving something yellow, some crazy, a red Ferrari, whatever, is people are driving and they look at you, right? And they go like, oh, cool. And then look at my hands. My hands kind of turn, meaning wherever your head is going, right? Just like any race car driver, you turn into that. So one of the big, uh, I wouldn't call it an issue, but something you need to be focused on is when you're driving something that's this important and this exciting, uh, and people are really buzzed about it, they tend to lean into you, turn into you, like this woman right here, who's really going uh, a little bit crazy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but at the same time, she's swerving all over the road, so I'm gonna take the camera and turn it around, and she's looking in the mirror right now. See, she's driving in the mirror. Can you see that in her thing? Look, she's waving up and down. Here she is right now with her hand out the window. See, she's waving. Do you see she's waving right there with her hand? Mercedes. Anyhow. Well guys, we're all done with the RS6 Avant and this thing is absolutely stunning in person. I can understand why. It's one of the most highly anticipated cars of 2021. Now, I took this for a drive and people were losing their minds, beeping the horn, giving me thumbs up, etc., etc. and it's totally understandable. On that note, if you want your car detailed and preserved, you know where to find me, ammonyc.com. Click on the preservation appointments, fill out the form, and then hopefully one day we'll see you in the ammo studio. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please subscribe and check out a sneak peek of some of the upcoming episodes on the channel. As always, thanks again, and see you next time.